No doubt in my mind, Ray is related to Obi-Wan some way or somehow and is probably his granddaughter. Now in this video, I'm going to be focusing on unsung evidence that helps to support this theory. Now, I know I'm not the only one who thought of this theory, but I do believe that a lot of the unsung evidence needs to be addressed. To start off, movies are novels put in the video format. And Star Wars has very high expectations, so it's like you're watching a novel. Just, just another way to think of what a movie is. And in the beginning of the movie, spoiler alert, there's a character that looks a lot like Alex Guinness that uh, gets killed by Kylo Ren. Now, what I believe this is showing that this could uh, foreshadow that Obi-Wan's lineage is, has been passed on. Whether that character is actually related to Obi-Wan of some way or somehow. But I do believe that it foreshadowed something. And later on in the movie, you heard Obi-Wan's um, voice when Rey was um, opening up that chest that had Anakin, um, Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber. And when it said... Ray, these are your first steps. Now, I do think that J.J. Abrams was maybe foreshadowing something that Obi-Wan's lineages was passed on some way and somehow. What also helps support um, this theory is attacking the theory that Luke Skywalker is related to uh, Ray, And... My, um, the one thing that contradicts that point a lot is Luke is too much of a hardcore traditionalist. In the movie, Luke Skywalker is at the first Jedi temple. And now what that says is, or shows, is basically he's very old school, very much a traditionalist. Which makes sense. What made him became a Jedi Knight was Yoda. Yoda's real teaching. Now you could well you can argue that Obi Wan did the same thing, but Obi Wan introduced him to the Force. Yoda taught him how to be a Jedi Knight. That's the difference. And Luke is just by this point just too much of a hardcore traditionalist. And in the old Jedi Order, you were not allowed to get married or to have um, offspring. Now, Obi Wan, when he uh, was um, good friends with Anakin during the prequels always thought, um, knew about his um, marriage with Padme and all of that. And even though Obi just kind of shows that Obi-Wan wasn't a hardcore traditionalist as Luke Skywalker was. So it makes sense that maybe Obi-Wan maybe had a child more so than uh, Luke um, having um, a child. Another big point about Rey being related to Obi-Wan is... Rey, when she first got the lightsaber, um, Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber, she was very intimidated by it and actually got a force vision. Did Luke get a force vision when he first touched uh, his father's lightsaber in the New Hope? No. So, obviously, Rey got a different, a different uh, vibe from touching that, and she was actually intimidated by that. Luke Skywalker, when he got in the New Hope, was just kind of like, dangling around just kind of like just using it just kind of using it almost like a toy just showing that Luke was far less intimidated by it and maybe just shows the difference and I could see like maybe Obi-Wan maybe not as powerful as Anakin Skywalker but it kind of shows how Obi-Wan was was kind of like intimidated he was more like more of a wise kind of fighter not as basically maybe as powerful as Luke Skywalker Later on, when Rey is captured um, by Kylo Ren, when he first meets her, he's just like, so you're the one that they're all talking about. Kind of, sh And the reason why that's important is because Kylo Ren's first name is Ben. And who was named Ben in Star Wars? Ben Kenobi. And we all know Kylo Ren was a failed Jedi and who went to the dark side. And... Since he was named Ben, it could have been that he could have had the expectations of becoming the Ben Kenobi. Now, we can assume that maybe Rey, maybe at one point was being taught by Luke some way, somehow. 
and that Kyle Ren was supposed to be Ben Kenobi, and then she showed up, and then she was actually related to Ben Kenobi. Kind of significant, some importance to her, because Kyle Ren has always had, basically for the majority of the movie, had some sort of interest in her. Now, knowing Kyle as a Kylo as a bad guy, a lot of people might think, oh, why wouldn't they just kill her or execute her? Well, most Sith and most like Darth Sith users are all tried to actually persuade um, Jedi, especially the Sith that um, used to be um, Jedi. For instance, Sidious, probably the king of trying to persuade a Jedi to the dark side, Darth Vader trying to persuade Luke Skywalker, and Obi-Wan, and Obi-Wan while trying to get, pers- or no, Count Dooku trying to persuade Obi-Wan to the dark side. And usually former Jedi would do that. And Kylo Ren was a former Jedi who failed. And a lot of people might say, well, Darth Maul never did that, or nor did General Grievous. First things first, Darth Maul was more of an assassin and more of an apprentice who was raised by the dark side. He was never once a Jedi. And General Grievous was never a force user. So when we look back at this, it really makes sense that maybe Kylo Ren tried to persuade her during the middle of the fight. Trying to get her to join his side because that's what Sith do. And he might look at her like, oh, well, I was supposed to be Ben Kenobi as um, when I was supposed to be a Jedi. And maybe she's supposed to be, maybe that if she joins me and we're partners in like, in like the Sith, that we can be a good combo. That's how I uh, look at how Kyle Ren, Ren views uh, Ray. All right. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, obviously, I just focused on unsung evidence that hasn't really been given much attention. And, uh, well, just thanks for watching the video. Uh, have a nice day.